you guys, Sean T. Phillips here on my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shout video today. They're going to go out today see so things came out, see so things on sale today. Today, though, there's a number of really big releases that come out. And one of the big things that comes out is a Zombieland Double Tap. And with that one, I know Best Buy has an exclusive steelbook of that one. I don't believe there's any other exclusives for that. Also, though, the uh, animated uh, Adam's Family film releases, as well as Countdown, uh, Jay and Silent Bob Reboot comes out, uh, Black and Blue. So like I said, a number of different things coming out today. Also, though, at the end of this video, is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. And as always, too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that are reviewed, if you guys have seen any of them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And I also want to let you guys know some really, really cool news. I just got cast in an upcoming horror film called Strix. And it's this one I'm really excited about. The movie's actually set in the 70s. So this is the first time I'm doing something that's like a movie set in the 70s. So really excited about this one. And they have a uh, Indiegogo up now. And there's some really, really cool perks on this one. And the link, I'll have the link below for the Indiegogo so you guys can find out all about the, about the movie and check out the teaser trailer for the film to get an idea what the film's going to be like and everything. But like I said, there's some really cool perks and from the link below I have it's a special link that has a secret perk on there where you guys can pre-order the movie on blu-ray and the blu-ray copy it would be a copy that I'll be signing so you guys can you know have it personalized to you and I'll be signing a copy of it and you guys will be able to get the movie earlier than you know before it gets its main release or anything like that so also on there though there's a really cool perk as well if you guys are interested in acting where you guys can act in a scene in, in the movie with me and the movie shooting in uh, Dallas Texas so that's where the, where the movie we will be filming so you guys are wondering where it is and everything so like I said there's some really cool perks there's also stuff on there like digital downloads for the movie and all kind of other things as well but the two big ones that relate to me though is the uh, you know uh, blu-ray uh, pre-order one which will be a signed blu-ray as well as the other perk on there which is to act in a scene with me which is a should be a really really cool scene as well so if you guys are interested in that like I said check out the link below but thanks so much guys for the support but really really excited about this one but in here though, in the front though, they, they didn't have this out last week, the Gemini Man one. This released last week, but they, uh, like I said, the big thing that came out today was the Addams Family movie. So I didn't get to see this one in theaters. If you guys have seen this one though, let me know how this one was. I always loved though, as a kid though, you know, the uh, Addams Family, like the movies I watched, like the live action ones so many times, you know, with, um, you know, Angelica Houston and Raul Julia and Christina Ricci. Like that was one of those movies I watched like so many times, like absolutely loved that movie. So like I said, let me know how this one was. And this one is $22.99 for the Blu-ray of that one, and then $17.99 for the DVD. Also down here, though, they have Jan Slime Bob um, Reboot, and that one's uh, $17.99 for the Blu-ray of that one. And I really like this movie. I've always been a fan of Jan Slime Bob and like everything that Kevin Smith has done, especially the View Askew uh, Universe films. And this movie, though, I know review-wise it's had some mixed reviews and everything, but to me, it totally has the same feel to the Jansom Bob and the, and, the, and the View Askew movies. It has that total same vibe and everything, and yeah, the same kind of humor and everything. And it, But he did, like, um, modernize some things and everything to it, but I really like this one. I think if you guys are a fan of Jansom Bob especially, definitely, definitely check this one out. Really liked it a lot. Uh, other than that, though, they have Zombieland uh, Double Tap here, and I'll be talking about the 4K of this one at the end of this video. So so definitely stay tuned for that. And that one is uh, $22.99 for that one. I'll have to look over in the actual section to see if they have the 4K of that. Other than that, though, let's see if anything else on the side here. It looks like all the same things over here. And it looks like, let's see, anything else new over here? No, all the same things here. But we'll check over in the actual section to see if they have anything different over there. But over here, though, in the actual section, they have Zombie Land on 4K, and that one's uh, $29.99 for the 4K edition, and then $22.99 for the Blu-ray, and then $19.99 for the DVD. Also, though, they have uh, Black and Blue here, and that's $22.99 for the Blu-ray, and then $19.99 for the DVD of that one. They also have um, here Countdown, that's $24.99 for the Blu-ray of that one. Uh, also here, though, they have uh, the new Helen Hunt movie, this horror film, which I really like, called ICU, and that one's uh, $12.99 for that one here and they have Jay and Silent Bob reboot here and that one is a uh, $17.99 for that one into the quality resale store we go 
and we'll see what's new in here. I haven't been in this place in, I don't know, like a little, maybe like two months or so. Everything in here, like um, all the DVDs are, you know, uh, one for $2.99 or four for $9.99. And I'm seeing, too, more Blu-rays down here. Like, they, they don't usually have a whole lot of Blu-rays in here, so I see a little bit more than the past. Because, like, in the past, they usually have, like, just, like, two or three, like, random ones. I don't see though a lot of the TV stuff. They used to have a lot of like over here like TV series and stuff that I found in the past. I don't know if they, it seems like the only like TV they have now that I'm noticing is Smallville, which is one of those shows. I don't think I ever actually watched an episode of the show. I don't know how, but it's one of those ones I never really watched. But like I said though, I'm gonna look through here and see if I can find anything out of print or anything. And like I said, here's some, you know, some of the Blu-rays in here, like Crank. Frank 2, which they put out the uh, first movie on 4K. I keep hoping they're going to put out the second one at some point because I really like the first movie a lot. I thought the second movie was I thought just as good. I haven't seen it though in a really, really long time. Let's see, like signs. See if there's anything different here. Trespass. They definitely are some more ones. This is one of those ones. Like that, I only ever watched once. Saw this in theaters. Never, never watched this one again. I thought it was okay, as I remember though. Some of these ones too, these um, Echo Bridge releases, can be like out of print and like really rare. Like some of the ones, like I think that has like they on it. You know, the Wes Craven movie one with um, Cursed. I think that's one of the rare ones, but some of them can randomly be like really rare. That depends. Even these particular ones might. It's kind of real random which ones are. Because I don't, I, I, I think, I'm sure at some point these ones will get re released by another company. But yeah, most of the Echo Bridge ones, for the most part, I've noticed some of them are, can be more common though. But as I remember, they, some of them can be pretty rare. Let's see though, I think. Oh, yeah, there's some more Blu rays here as well, like Hangover 3 see any other this one here that has snatch and layer cake see yeah like I said definitely are a bunch more than the past I think too I was seeing January man over here and I think that one might be one of the out of print ones because like with um, Warner with um, uh, MGM some of those ones can be rare as well it all kind of depends like I said I'll show you guys if I come across anything really different today this one too I have not what's another one of these movies I have not seen in forever I remember kind of liking this one when this came out and as a kid I used to kind of mix this one up for some reason with the shadow I don't know why I don't know if anyone else is like that with this movie but I used to like always mix the two up and I have no idea why because they were very different but they had a similar kind of feel to them so I was constantly mixing this one up with a shadow for some reason but like I said though gonna look through you know all this stuff here and if I come across anything different though I'll show you guys though this is a pretty cool thing here and I actually don't have this this Rodney Dangerfield no respect the ultimate collection which is some of his stand-up specials here and it looks like it says on here TV TV box sets included $2.99 so I'm thinking this one will be $2.99 I have to see I'll take it up to the front and see but I'm pretty sure this would I guess they would consider this kind of TV ish so we'll see though, but this is definitely an interesting one here, and I, 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 I've, you know, that I never got in the past because this one released in 2004. So this is definitely an interesting one, and definitely gonna get this one if it's that price. Yeah, this was the one though I was mentioning though, but I looked it up. This one wasn't out of print for some reason. I think it was in the past or something like that. But when it comes to like these MGM titles, I, there's a lot of them that aren't as like as sold after anymore because they've gotten like re-released on you know they got releases on Blu-rays from like Kino and some other companies and stuff. So yeah, I think at one point this one might have been, but it doesn't seem like it isn't now. It seems like it's like two dollars or something like that. I never you know resell or anything any of these things. I just like to try and find out of print stuff for low prices and stuff like that this one here i don't think i ever watched this one here but in there though the only thing that i ended up picking up and it did end up being only three dollars was the rodney dangerfield no respect uh, dvd collection here which has like um a number of different you know stand-up comedy specials and this is one i had never gotten in the past and really don't come across this one too often so i was really really glad to get this one in there and like i said for only three dollars this was definitely a really really good price for that one into walmart we go and over here though, there's like some weird stuff I've never seen before when they have like clearance clothes items outside like this. There's all these like balloons and stuff that say like clearance. 
but I've never seen them have anything anything like this ever. I, I you know, and, and, and all the years of like my entire life going to Walmart, never seen like these like clearance clothes out here. So it's really funny. It's like clearance shoes. There's even like some clearance toys over here. It'd be funny if they had that. I know there isn't any clearance movies, but yeah, it's like a bunch of like clearance toys out here. What's bad though is, you know, they have all this stuff outside like this, but, and it looks like rain is gonna come. So it's like, hopefully there's not like a terrible rainstorm with all this stuff out here. But hopefully in here today though, they changed out the actual section, got out the new releases. Cause I was in this location last Tuesday and this one is usually really good with having like the new releases out for the most part. They don't, sometimes they don't like when it's like, you know, the first Tuesday of the month, they don't always change out all that kind of stuff. But you know, usually are pretty good. But last Tuesday they didn't change out anything. So there was like absolutely not one new release. Like all the spots were empty and everything. So fingers crossed that today they have out all the stuff. Cause like I said, there's definitely a lot of things today so hopefully they change them out. I also want to say too, thanks again guys for all the support and everything with the projects that I've been acting in lately and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, this new one, Strix, this is one I'm really, really excited about. And like I said, some really, really cool perks on this one. So like I said, definitely be sure to check out the link below for the link where you guys can pre-order the Blu-ray and it has, like I said, where it also has the acting in the movie perk and all that kind of stuff as well. But over here though, uh, Zombieland Dumber Tap in here is uh, $27.99 for the 4K of that one. And it's funny, the Blu-ray Blu-rays don't seem to have uh, slip covers on them, but the Blu-rays are $19.99, and then Adam's Family is uh, $22.99 for the Blu-ray, and then $17.99 for the DVD of that one, and then it's a uh, $17.96 for the uh, DVD of. Um, Zombieland uh, Double Tap. And then over here though, uh, Black and Blue, and this is what I'm going to be talking about at the end of this video as well. That one's on $19.96 for the Blu-ray, and then $17.96 for the DVD. And in here though, it's funny, it's the same price for the Blu-ray or the DVD of uh, Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. In here, like I was saying though, I really, really like this one a lot. So that's a really good price for that one as well. Also though, this one here called The Courier, uh, Courier this one released today, and that one's a $14.96 for the uh, Blu-ray, and then $12.96 for the DVD and then countdown in here is uh, $22.96. It's funny in Target it was like $24.99 or something like that. It was a lot more in Target but I actually thought this was a fun movie. Like this is one I you know I know like the reviews were not great on this movie but I actually like the concept of this movie it was basically though like uh, an app where like everyone's downloading this app and it tells you exactly like the day like to the day and the, and the time and everything when you're gonna die and everyone just sort of thinks it's like a joke thing but it ends up like because like looking like it's true and like affecting people and it's affecting this one girl and she's trying to figure out how to like not die when, when it says she is and figure out how to like stop the whole thing but like I said I actually really like this one other than that though uh, running with the devil I believe that I'm pretty sure that was last Tuesday uh, this is another one that came out last Tuesday I don't think I saw it out though it was this one called cold eight it's one of these movies if you guys have seen this one though let me know if how this one was other than that though all the other ones for, for the past couple couple weeks Hopefully here like and I don't <laughs> think there's anything else over here let's see if there's anything else different like all this stuff was on uh, last Tuesday like a uh, 3022 uh, and they have um, I see you here this is one though that I would definitely recommend you guys check this one out I really really like this movie with Helen Hunt it's one of those movies too where kind of like you think it's one thing and then it turns into something totally different but that's uh, 1296 for that one but like I said though this one top recommendation really really love that one other than that though I do see a couple other things over here though I see this one um nation's fire here and that one is on uh, 996 for this one this is a movie directed by Thomas uh, J Churchill here and I should have a review of this one soon other than that though this one might have been today this toys and pets I'm not 100% sure on that though let me see if there's anything else else different over here uh, mercenary these ones were all uh, a week or two back Let's see if there's anything else over here I think call of the wilderness I might not have seen that one in here before yeah but that seems to be all the main different things here today though as far as I can tell 
And this past weekend, I saw a couple of different films in theaters. The first one I saw was uh, Bad Boys for Life, which is the third film in the Bad Boys series. I think the last one was in 2003. But I was so excited to see, you know, Martin Lawrence back in a movie again as, you know, a starring role again. Because he hasn't done a movie. I think his last feature in theaters where he was, like, one of the leads was big, like, the, the last Big Mama's film, which I think was, like, 2011. And he did have a part, though, in Beach Bomb. And I thought, like, he totally stole the show on Beach Bomb. If you guys haven't seen that, you know, Harmony Crins movie, that's definitely one you guys got to check out. But I really love seeing, you know, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith back together again. And I actually really like this movie a lot. I thought, though, it was really well done. I thought there were some really, really funny jokes in it. And it's basically, though, their, their characters now and the, who were both cops. And, you know, Martin Lawrence's character has pretty much gotten to the point where he wants to retire. He can't do it anymore. But he has to, you know, because of something that happens to, um, you know, Will Smith's character, he kind of has to come back into it again, you know, kind of, and he doesn't really want to, but he has to kind of help him because he's, because of what's, you know, people coming after Will Smith's character. I don't know. Like I said, I thought it was a really, really fun movie. The other the other one that I saw was the film Like a Boss, which stars Rose Byrne, uh, Tiffany Haddish, and Selma Hayek, and that's another one I really liked. You know, I, it, I know review-wise, though, it didn't get the best reviews, but there really is some funny stuff in that. It's basically, though, about Rose Byrne's character and Tiffany Haddish, who have been friends since middle school, and they have this, like, uh, cosmetics company that they, you know, have been running, and they have, like, a, a storefront, and they, they've been doing okay there, but they've been having some problems, like, with, you know, um making enough money to kind of play, keep the place open, but they, the people who go there really like their stuff, and Sam Hayek's character has this um, big makeup company, and she wants to come in there and, like, um, you know, help it invest in the company, but she kind of has all these other, like, schemes that she's doing to try and, like... Um, you know, basically, she has all these kind of schemes and these other motives for their for their company and everything. And it's kind of you know they go there and you know start to you know talk to her about you know investing in the company. And like I said, she's kind of planning these other things, and it kind of is throwing all these kind of problems for them and their friendship and everything. But like I said, I thought it was actually a really funny movie. There's some really funny stuff in it. It was funny though. It was one of those movies though. Well, like you know, with a lot of comedies, they kind of like um, you know sometimes can really ruin a lot of the jokes. But what's funny with this one though was a lot of the stuff that was in the trailer like the jokes and stuff like that didn't actually make it into the movie so it was like kind of like like different because a lot of times with like I said with comedies they kind of spoil everything a lot of the really funny jokes get spoiled but it, with this one a lot of the ones that were the really funny jokes in the trailer were not even in the movie which was really interesting but if you guys got to see either of those films though let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of them or what you guys saw this past weekend if you guys got to check anything out into Best Buy we go yeah, and over here, though, in the front, though, they have Adam's Family here. The uh, Blu-ray here is $22.99. It's $17.99 for the DVD. And then Countdown here is $22.99. Like I was saying, it's funny. That was, like, the most expensive, though, in um, Target with this one. Also, though, Black and Blue here. That one's $19.99 for that one. Uh, Jan and Bob Reboot here is $14.99. And they do have some of the Zombie Land uh, Double Tap uh, Steelbooks here. That one is $32.99 for that one. Uh, but I really did like this movie. I thought this was actually a fun follow up to the film, you know, the first movie, and the, you know, 10 years later and everything, but like I said, this one is, um, you know, $32.99 for that one, and the standard 4K here is $27.99, and then it's $19.99 for the, um, the Blu-ray, but it was funny, like, how Walmart, none of their uh, Blu-rays had slipcovers on them, it was really weird how, like, um, none of them had it, and it's funny, too, every time I look at this Jan Son Bob reboot cover, it always has, like, a similar look to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I don't know if anyone else is noticing that, but it has, like, a really similar, I don't know if it's supposed to be like a takeoff on it or something, but it has a very similar look, and like, sometimes on like Blu-ray.com when I see this, I think it's that, you know, Chance on Bob, real quick, if you see it fast, this is really weird, it has a really similar, you know, look to that one. But over here, though, in the actual section, though, they have uh, the Courier here as well. This one was at Walmart as well. Um, this one's $14.99 for that one. They also have this uh, new Jackie Chan film that came out called uh, The Knights of Shadows, and that one's uh, $14.99 for that one. They also have Adam's Family and Zombieland over here. Other than that, too, uh, this came out a while back, but you don't, it's kind of, you don't see it too often, this Game of Thrones complete collection here. This is this huge limited edition set here for $249. Then they also have a complete collection here on D. 
DVD for $169. But that's a cool set though. I don't know exactly what you'd say this thing is, but it's definitely a cool thing. Other than that though, it seems to be all the same stuff over here. They did get more of the Rambo um, Last Blood Steelbooks. It's always funny how with Best Buy with Steelbooks, sometimes when the Steelbooks like sell out and stuff, you never see them get them back. And other times they kind of come back in like a month or two later after they release, like with some of the Disney ones and that kind of stuff. So anyway though guys, that's all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also in the comments below though, let me know, you know what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K today, if you guys ended up picking up anything. And be sure as well too to check out the link below to find out all about the movie Strix and how you guys can pre-order the, uh, the Blu-ray, you know, the signed Blu-ray copy of the film. Also too, let me know as well what you guys thought of all the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video. If you guys have seen them, and if you guys plan on picking any of them up, you know what you guys thought of them if you have seen the movies but anyway though guys uh thank you so much for watching subscribing now stay tuned for the brand new reviews and the first one i got here is from lion's gate it's a zombie movie here called dead earth this is one i really liked a lot the movie kind of has a throwback feel to like some of the 1980s like italian zombie movies kind of reminded me like i think it was zombie three or zombie four which was set on like this island a little bit like nightmare city but like, like i said it has a real like italian kind of zombie movie feel like it was giving me that kind of vibe and it's like it's a really cool concept as well it's it, you know it's all set on this abandoned you know resort in thailand it's basically though about these two girls who are you know surviving there and they're basically hiding out there you know hiding away from the zombies it's pretty much though all about what they're going through while they're there. And it's kind of like, since it's this huge resort, they have to kind of like do like perimeter, perimeter checks and like checking around and making sure there's no zombies. And they're kind of like, um, they don't want to make a lot of noise too. So they can't really talk too much. And they have like certain areas they can talk where it's kind of like soundproof rooms and stuff like that. But it's kind of them there, what they're going through, like watching TV. And then also though, it's kind of like, there's this big concerns though about like the, so there is food there and everything, but they're kind of talking like, like, how long can we stay here? And, like, they have to go out and, you know, get other supplies. And if they leave, there's all kinds of concerns, too, that, you know, some of the, if the survivors they could come across could, you know, find out where they're living. And they could all come there. And if, if they come there and make lots of noise, it could, like, bring in hordes of zombies. And the zombies in here, too, they're, like, really, really crazy zombies. Like, there's some really cool zombie sequences in this movie. But, like, all around, though, the main actresses here that did a really, really good job in this movie. I actually really like this one a lot. This is a really cool zombie movie. Like I said, I really like the setting to this one. Where it was filmed was kind of reminded me a little bit like the resort area. It kind of had like a vibe like the location to like, it was making me think of like the island of Dr. Moreau. It, it, it kind of like, um, where the, you know, in the, in the, the one in the, in the nineties with Marlon Brando was, I always loved, I always really loved that movie, but like the, um, the place where the one guy was staying, like in the kind of like, um, like, cabin kind of thing uh you know uh, the hotel kind of thing he was staying in it kind of like looked like that a little bit in some of the rooms and stuff like that but really really would recommend you guys check this one out here the next one here is from sony this is directed by um Dion Taylor and I always really like his movies he directed um Meet the Blacks and Traffic and I always like the stuff that he does and this is a movie here with stars Naomi Harris and Tyrese Gibson and it's black and blue this is one I didn't get to see in theaters and I really like this one this was you know um Naomi Harris though of course was in Moonlight and I always think of her too from 28 Days Later She's one of the main characters in that. And this is basically, though, about her character, who's this cop. And she's, I think she's only been there, at, you know, um, like for a little bit, like a couple weeks or so. And she has the one partner that she works with. And they get along well and everything. But uh, the, the chief there says to her, right when she's done with her shift, he says, oh, I, I to her partner, he's, you know, she, uh, he's saying to him, oh, could you stay and do a double? Because, you know, uh, we need somebody else. And this person called out and everything. And he's like, well, I have this party that I'm going going to and she, but she ends up saying oh don't, don't worry about it I'll I'll fill in for her you know for him and everything so she ends up going to do this double so she has to work with this other guy she's never worked with before and the guy is kind of acting a little weird the way he is and he's kind of unhappy that she's there and he you know he wanted to work with the other guy you know who you know has to go to this party to go to and she's filling in for and basically though what ends up happening here though is uh he, he gets this call on his phone and it's like uh he's like says to her oh we gotta go I got this call and she's like, well, why'd you get a call on the phone to, about something going bad that you need to check on? 
when did it come on the radio? And he's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, I, someone's calling me. We got it. We got to check this thing out. And, but you, and then when they get there, though, he's like, you wait in the car. And she's like, here's a noise and ends up going inside to check. And it turns out there's some real bad stuff going on. And the cops there, he's in there with these other cops and these like guys. And he ends up, you know, um, the one guy gets shot and she sees it. It's on her camera, you know, her um body camera so she sees this thing and then the other cops there that are with him are up to up to bad things or like you got to get that footage what is she doing why are you in here and he and the guy's yelling at her going you sh i told you to stay in the car basically what ends up happening though is she ends up you know they shoot at her one of the guys and, and then she runs off and the whole movie is about her trying to uh you know get this footage on the body cam back to the precinct and you know she comes across tyrese gibson's character who works at this um market and he's like try, try, tries to help her and you know he's not really sure if he wants to help her because he doesn't want like to help the police and everything but it's basically though about them together and trying to you know get this footage back but these cops call in the other cops and blame her for something and say she did something bad so everyone's coming after her and she doesn't know who she can trust and it's a whole big crazy movie but it was really really well done really well acted I thought Naomi Harris did a great job seeing with Tyrese Gibson's but really like this one like I said on here though this has some featurettes on the movie movie as well as deleted scenes the next one here is from um, Sony as well and this is a uh, zombie land uh, double tap and this is the 4k ultra HD edition which has the 4k the blu-ray and the digital copy of the film and I really like this movie I love the first zombie land movie like I remember seeing that one in theaters and how much I loved that at the time so you know I, and I had heard for years there was talk about you know making a sequel and then it didn't end up happening so it finally did after 10 years and I really liked it I, it's basically though all the characters back now, you know, 10 years later, you know, it's Woody Harrelson's character, you know, Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg, Everett Breslin, and Emma Stone, and, you know, in the original movie, was, uh, Jesse Eisenberg was, you know, started to like, uh, you know, uh, Emma Stone because they met, you know, and Emma Stone's sister is played by, uh, you know, Abigail Breslin, Woody Harrelson basically is, you know, uh, meets Jesse Eisenberg's character first because it's about people who are surviving the zombie outbreak and it's kind of done you know the first one was done as a zombie you know horror movie mixed with comedy the new film though is much more you know it still has zombie stuff in it but it's much more of like a comedy than the first one the first movie had some scary kind of stuff a little bit of scary kind of horror more horror elements and then comedy mixed in but this one like I said is way more of like a comedy movie with zombie aspects in it but it's basically though about the characters you know coming back together now and just showing where they are you know and their relationships and everything and uh you know 10 years later and Woody Harrelson's character is pretty much like that like the same that he was in the you know the original film and he kind of hasn't changed a lot he kind of has his rules and the way he does things and everything and you know uh um you know, it's uh, with Emma Stone and Jesse Eisberg's character, their relationship is kind of strained a little bit. They're having some disagreements. And, uh, you know, uh, Abigail Breslin's character is kind of, you know, tired of always having to be around with them. And she's like, starts to really want to leave and do her own thing. And it's kind of just, like I said, it's all about what they're going through. And pr problematic things happen without ruining things. Another character comes into play here, you know, played by Zoe Deutsch. Do Deutsch and, um, you know, she kind of comes into play. And it just becomes like a whole triangle of problems you know Rosario Dawson is in the movie as well but I really liked it like I said it was really cool to see the characters back together again one thing that was surprising though was there was in the first movie there was one specific thing that was like this huge thing a huge aspect that you know um, Woody Harrelson's character was trying to find and they all kept being stale and it was all these issues and in the, in the new movie though they don't mention that I, I was really thinking they were going to bring that up but it was just weird that they didn't bring up that one thing that was the one thing I know some other people were surprised as well that they didn't say really anything about it but on here though it has a whole lots of different features on here it has uh, extended bloopers and outtakes has alternate and extended scenes has a day with Bill Murray on here it has a thing on the doppelgangers because there's versions of themselves that they come across in this movie that look like them like look like Woody Harrelson and Jesse Eisenberg and also on here is a bunch of different um, making ofs on here um, you know making the Babylon uh, making you know making his um, the rides of zombie land uh, the rules of of making a zombie film it also has a commentary track on here so lots and lots of features 4k wise though if you guys have 4k capacities the movie looks great on 4k the big thing that i always notice with 4k is all around it's like a, and i've said this a lot in the past it's just a much much brighter picture and a much more vibrant picture quality all around 
also too, it, you know, with the HDR, it's all about too the contrast level. So it has much more contrast to the film overall. But really, really fun movie. Uh, the next one here is from um, uh, Umbrella Entertainment. This is an Australian release. Now this one is region free though. You guys can play this one in any U.S. Blu-ray player. And this is a movie which has always been a favorite of mine. Is ever since I was a kid. I've never seen this in theaters. How much I love this movie. I was so excited when I found out that you know um, Umbrella Entertainment was releasing a Blu-ray of this movie. And it's a movie starring uh, Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin, and it's uh, Coneheads. And this is one of those movies. Throughout the years, I have watched this movie so many times. Uh, Chris Farley is also in this movie, uh, and I always like Chris Farley's character in this film. And it's basically though about you know um, uh, Beldar, uh, you know, and, and his wife uh, who have come from space, and they're you know they have cone heads because they're space aliens. They crash down on Earth in the beginning of this movie, and you know this, of course this was based on the SNL uh, skit that they you know was on in the 70s and 80s with you know Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin's character. But it basically though, uh, you know it's you know years you know uh, th this one though. Is, is you know if you didn't see those skits or anything like that, it's its own movie. But basically, though, their um, spacecrafts crashes on Earth, and uh, they end up trapped on Earth, and they have to try and figure out how they're going to get back to you know their planet. But when they call to their planet through like their, their space communication device thing, they say, "Oh, we can't be here for like 15 years or something like that." So they end up having to make their own lives lives there and have to get jobs, and you know they end up having a, a child there, and the movie picks up when their, their child is, you know, a teenager and she's dating uh, Chris Farley's character. And it's basically, though, about... Um just their life on Earth, and then um, also about one of the characters that, like, in the beginning of this movie, sees, finds out about them, and is always trying to track them down and find them, and it's like his mission. And David Spade's in the movie, and he works with this guy who's trying to track him down, like this alien kind of group, trying to sort of like an like the CIA kind of group, something like that, who's trying to track them down. But this is a really, really, really fun movie. I also really love the music in this movie. Like, I, it has a really great score in here. It's from, um, you know. Who, was, who did the music in here? It was, uh, yeah, David Newman, who also did the music and around the same time for Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. And kind, they kind of have like a similar kind of sound. They always kind of reminded me of Bogus Journey a little bit, the music in this one, especially this, the scene in Bogus Journey in Heaven. This movie kind of has like that kind of music, but throughout the movie for a lot of the movie. I don't know, just one of these movies, if you guys have never seen this movie, an absolute must watch. And like I said, so glad that Umbrella Entertainment released this one on Blu-ray. And the next one I got here is from Dark Sky Entertainment. It's a movie here called The Siren. This was an interesting movie. This is about this guy who had this accident when he was a kid where he, you know, it crushed his throat so he isn't able to talk. And he moved to this kind of like lakefront little tiny, tiny little house where it's like basically just like a room in it. And it's kind of like, it's all like big windows and everything. It's kind of looking out at this, you know, um, you know, this lake. When he's there, though, the first night he gets there, right when he gets there, he meets this guy who lives nearby, and he kind of, like, had something happen to him in the past, and they kind of, like, tell you a little bit about it as the movie goes along, but he ends up meeting him, and the guy helps him, like, turn the lights on and everything, and the power on in the house, and, though, but the same night, too, he ends up seeing this girl when he's, like, sitting out there, like, on the, um, right outside of his house by the lake, he sees this woman swimming in the lake. He's, and, he, and you know, she starts talking to him, and he's like saying how he, you know, showing how he can't talk and all that kind of thing. And it's basically though, uh, you you see like these flashbacks, and you see these like th you know if they're like they're her imagining things or what exactly they are. But she's like you know, um, basically you're finding out though earlier on in this movie, the very, like first like ten minutes or so, that this girl is like living in this lake, and it's like a siren of this lake or some something like this is going on. And basically though, she's like um, around there, and then like he's out in the boat and she comes out there and the whole thing is like kind of about you know her meeting him and what goes on from there at the same time too about the guy who lives nearby you know who helped with the power and kind of his story as well but like I said this was actually a really really interesting movie on here though it has two different commentary tracks on here as well as an interview from Glasgow Fest and a, a theatrical trailer on this one the next one here is from Gravitas Ventures it's a movie called Home with a View of the Monster this is basically though this is done in like different segments like different parts where you kind of find out about different characters and it was about like this um this couple in the beginning of this movie who uh, you know have like rent their house out as like a bed and breakfast and they were kind of like on a trip together and um you know uh, they were like kind of wanted to they, 
their relationship is kind of up and down a little bit in the beginning. You kind of find out it's like kind of rocky a little bit. So they were kind of taking this trip and then they said to each other, well, you know what? I think things are okay. We should go back home. But uh, the people who are renting the house out, they're like going to be there. So we have to call and like see if they'll leave a little bit early. So they call and then people are like, oh yeah, well, we can, we can leave, you know, a couple days early. As soon as they get there, though, like they see the car of the person who's running the house, but then they like don't see anybody in there. And then it's kind of like something weird is going on. And then like they call the phone number and they can't get anybody. And then like um, this crazy guy, this guy was like, um, uh, you know, and then they call a number too. And they like and they find out like they find like see a suitcase sitting there. They call the number and like the phone number in the suitcase was a different number. And the person's like, you stole my suitcase. Why'd you steal this from me? And it's like something really weird is going on with the people who are staying in this house. And then like later, the, like the guy who was staying there, some guy, uh, you know, is like knocking, like trying to coming into the house with an axe, trying to get in this door that was locked. And like I said, it kind of cuts to showing like, you know, um, something about this house and something weird had happened with the people who were staying there. And there's like I said, you find out more and more as this goes along, but it shows in different segments because it kind of shows the couple that was, you know, going to rent the house, the people that were, you know, in the house, renting the house, and it kind of shows their perspective on things. But this is a really, really interesting movie here. Like I said, this one is called Home with a View of the Monster. Next ones here are both from uh, MovieZing.com, and I have a link below where you guys can order these ones for the best price. This one here is a um, movie called, and this is also from, I can't remember for sure the company, but I have a link below for the company for this one. But it's a movie called She Walks the Woods. This is about a group of these friends who, um, you know, do like a like a YouTube kind of show where they go and like um, it's kind of like survival kind of show, like survivalists, and they kind of show how to survive out in the woods or staying out there for a long period of time, or how to like put certain things together, or put together like survival kits and that kind of stuff. And a group of these friends are going out there to film their next episode, going out to the woods, and the one friend um, is like letting them stay out in this area out there, and they they basically though uh, the one guy kind of likes this girl, and it's kind of like a whole big thing going on. But they go out there to stay out there, and it's kind of like, you know, you know something is going on. You know something kind of bad or is going to happen. You kind of get this sort of feeling like somebody's kind of watching where they are and, like, kind of sort of spying on them and everything. It's like some kind of a thing or creature or something like that. So it's basically, though, them out there doing their show as, you know, they're realizing that, you know, there's something out there and, like, what they're going to do. And it's it's actually a pretty interesting movie here. Like I said, this one here is called She Walks the Woods. The next one here is from MovieZing.com as well. This is also um, from, I think it's Emperor, Emperor Boulder Productions. And I have, like I said, I have a link for the actual, comp the main companies for all these ones as well, uh, these two ones as well. And this is a movie here called Solver. And this was an interesting movie. This is about, like, um, this one's grand. I think it was his. Yes, yeah, grandfather had died, and he and he ended up leaving the uh, place to his uh, grandson. And but his grandson goes there to kind of check out the place and everything. And his grandfather was always into like puzzles and like real kind of complicated things to solve. And when he, when he gets there though, he ends up going in there and coming across this whole like really elaborate kind of puzzle. And it's kind of about him going in there and kind of becoming because the guy, the guy too like is also was really into puzzles. So his grandfather's in there. When he, I, I think and they kind of had like a love of puzzles and like kind of complicated things to solve and that kind of thing. So when he gets in there though, he comes to realize though that there's this complicated puzzle type thing there. And it's kind of him and he's trying to like look into this and trying to solve this. And it's kind of like the whole place has like um, booby trap kind of things and like things are all kind of set up to do certain things. It's a it's a really interesting thing. It's kind of him trying to get to the, to the bottom of the whole thing. And it's a really interesting movie here. Like I said, this one here is called Solve. Solver. The next ones here are all from uh, Mill Creek. It's a bunch of really cool releases here to let you guys know about. The first ones, though, are, like I said, from Mill Creek, but these are also ITN uh, distribution titles. These first two, and it's a movie here called uh, a, Psycho, uh, a Psycho's Path. And this is pretty cool. This is about, like, this guy who is this crazed killer who ended up getting, you know, taken to this insane asylum. And, like, and then, and then, um, He's like really crazy guy, and basically though they like are transporting him to wasn't it, I think they were transporting him to a, like a prison, but then the, you know he ends up you know in the prison though I was it I can't think he, I th no I think he was no he went no he was in a prison and then he was getting transported to an a sane asylum, and then when he gets there though uh, you know it looks like you know they're all like the, the, you know the the cops and everything are kind of like you know 
not really paying as much attention as they should that you know this might not be safe you know like they, they may not be able to keep him in there and like he may escape or something of course in the beginning of this movie though as soon as he gets in there he ends up like attacking the you know the, the nurse and everything he ends up escaping and it's like him going around around and like crazy things going on and them trying to catch him and everything it's a really really crazy movie it's, it's and it's shot too kind of has like a grindhouse kind of look to it and everything but i actually thought this was a pretty cool movie this one is from uh, it distribution as well as, as also Mill Creek release and it's a movie here called uh, Savage Creatures also both of these ones include digital copies through their um Milk Creek streaming service movie spree, but like this one here is called uh, Savage Creatures, and this one is a cool like mix up, you know, ma mash up between like uh, a movie with like uh, you know with like cannibals and zombies and like uh, aliens, and because it, it, it starts off as, as one thing and then it becomes a totally other thing. So it's like a, this weird couple, or like a I think they were saying like they're mother and daughter, mother and son, but then they were kind of like seeing like they were a couple. But basically though, they're like these crazed like cannibals that were basically like kidnapping women and people that they were bringing back to the house they were like they were like hitchhiking and that kind of stuff bringing them back to the house like planning on eat to eating them and um they, they end up you know bringing these two girls back but they like don't know that these girls that they brought back are like these vampires so it's kind of like you know they brought back these vampires but then at the same time too there's like a um like a full moon kind of like comet kind of thing going on which dealing with aliens and like i said it's it deals though with, with the cannibals it deals with like these aliens that are coming and as well as zombies so it kind of ends up being like like i said a mashup between all these things together it was actually really cool the way it was all put together on here though it has a director's commentary track behind the scenes as well as a visual effects uh, breakdown on this one the next ones here are a bunch of um you know double feature blu-rays uh, well the f first one isn't a double feature but then the, th the next three are double features but the first one though is the jennifer lopez movie uh, made in manhattan this is a movie though i always like this movie it's one of those movies that's, where it's like it's on TV or something. I'm always looking at it. I've seen this movie a number of different times. And it's basically about Jennifer Lopez's character who works at this uh, hotel, you know, as, you know, a maid at the hotel. And this guy who's this real rich guy who comes there. And it, it's kind of this mi mistaken thing where the guy doesn't know and realize that she's not a maid. And, she, you know, he thinks that she's a guest and has all this money as well. And he kind of like, uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez's character doesn't want him to find out. So it's kind of about like all these kind of things about her trying to make sure he doesn't find out and kind of all the things that she's going through and making sure like her friends don't say anything and making sure it doesn't like leak out or anything but it's a really really good movie like I said I've watched this movie so many times and this one here has the um, blu-ray in here as well as a DVD copy of the film the next ones though these three ones are all uh, double feature ones here I want to let you guys know were available the first one here is two movies which star uh, Joaquin F Phoenix, and the one is uh, Reservation Road, as well as uh, Return to Paradise here. And on the uh, Reservation Road uh, Blu-ray, it includes uh, deleted scenes on this one. The other double feature one here is a movie with Jack Lemmon, Ted Danson, and Ethan Hawke called Dad, as well as um, the Walter Matthau movie, uh, I'm Not Rappaport. That was one of those movies, I remember seeing that one when that like years back, I think it was one of those things like I saw like on HBO or something, I remember liking that movie a lot. Always loved Walter Matthau, of course, like in the Grumpy Old Men films. My favorite too was him as Mr. Wilson and Dennis the Menace. So I feel I don't know. I, that's one of those movies I like. Hope one day gets a Blu-ray release. I always loved that movie, but always been a fan. I was a fan of Walter Matthau, and then Jack, Jack Lemmon, though, of course, who was in the Grumpy Old Men films as well with Walter Matthau. So it's a double feature one. It's kind of cool that this one has the, both of them together. And the last double feature one here, and all these ones too, uh, Made in Manhattan. Uh, though this one here, uh, you know, this one here though includes digital uh, HD, and this one here. Here is a uh, double feature as well, which has two films. Um, the one here is The Color of Magic, and the other one is Hogfather here in this set here. Like I said, this has the uh, Blu-ray as well as a digital copy of the movies in HD. And the next one here is from Wild Eye Releasing. It's a movie here called A Million Hits. This one is basically, though, about, like, these girls in school, uh, in high school, who are, like, these mean girls. And they, like, have, like, a YouTube channel where they're posting videos of them, like, bullying people and, like, doing really bad stuff. Like, really bad stuff, but it's, like, 
becoming like viral a lot of things are becoming popular and like people are really watching them and they're kind of like doing this kind of stuff and it's about like one of the people that they do this to and it's kind of like you know that they're like really picking on and it also deals too with other things that they're picking on as well and kind of like the the whole thing with the school and the school's finding out about this stuff and it's basically like a, like a mean girls kind of thing but like to like a hot like a terrible extent of what's going on this horrific kind of bullying going on but it's a really really well done, well acted movie just dealing with this with bullying in school and all this kind of stuff that the one girl is going through and these girls that are like really doing these things to try and get like attention online and it's like the really the wrong kind of like terrible negative attention but it has on here though feature wise it has uh, theatrical trailers on this one for other uh, Wild Eye releasing titles. Next one here is from Music Box Films. It's a movie here called Piranhas, which is an Italian film. This one is a really well done character piece, though. This is about a group of these kids who like um, they live in this town and stuff like that. And when there's like these like drug dealers going around and stuff like that, and they they want to try and like make more money and kind of be like kind of like take over what's going on. And because they basically like start to go and like you know doing drugs and like criminal kind of stuff, and they're like going after the other people in town who are. Selling selling things and kind of trying to intimidate them and kind of trying to like take over and get their business and everything so they get more money and it's kind of like you know but do this from doing all this though it's kind of like the percussions of going on and like you know and their struggles with what they're doing and it's a really like I said it's a really really well acted movie here really well done character piece on here it has on here feature wise a making of feature ad it has an interview on here with um, Robert Sorvino as well as a press conference with the cast and crew from the Berlin Ali on this one the next one here is from, um, this is from Film Movement. This is a movie, this is from 1980, and it's a movie called uh, Gregory's Girl. And this is the one I had never heard of before. This is a really interesting movie. And it's basically, though, about this kid who's in high school, and it's kind of like, um, he's like on the, um, the football team, you know, which is soccer in you know in the UK, and it's basically though like he ends up leaving the team or thinks he's gonna leave, and then on the team though when they're having like the beginning stages of like the tryouts and everything, this one girl kind of comes in to the team to try out, and like the coach is like not sure about this and if he wants to have her on the team because of his views on everything, and it's basically though about like she's like the best player on the team, and like the other everyone else on the team knows this and everything, but the one guy though he starts to kind of like. Her. Her. And it's kind of about like him trying to like impress her and also about him like kind of messing around with his friends and kind of what he's going through and his kind of struggles if he wants to play, you know, football anymore, if that's really what he wants to do. And it's just like a really, really well done, a uh, fun movie here. Like I said, this one here is called uh, Gregory's uh, Girl. And this one has on here feature wise a commentary track on here. It has a um, interview on here, a couple different interviews from the film, a new essay from film scholar Jonathan Murray. And it has alternate U.S. and French dub versions of the movie as well. Also has a booklet in here that has you know some pictures from the film and some production facts and all that kind of stuff as well about the movie. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Full Moon. And this is a movie here which I had never seen before, starring Sybil Danning, called uh, Panther Squad. This movie kind of has like the vibe of some of the Andy uh, S Andy Sedaris movies. They were in like the 80s and 90s. It kind of has that sort of feel, which I think this one though was actually before those movies a little bit before I don't know for sure what year this was was made but if you guys are fan of the Andy, Andy Sedaris movies this movie has that kind of feel a little bit it's basically though about like this all girl group of like um that are trying to stop basically like this astronaut was like kidnapped and they have to try and get him back and it's kind of like all these this group of these girls going after them and kind of everything that they're going through and it's like a crazy fun action movie but it's a really really cool movie it also has really good music in this one as well and you know a uh, full moon did a really good job cleaning up the movie on here on here though i can't remember i, I believe it had a feature on here i can't remember for sure what it was on this one it did have a bunch of trailers for other full moon releases and it had one on for the full moon movie that I'm in, uh, you know, Ouija's Hollyweed Night. It has a trailer on there for that. So that was cool to see that on this release. And the last one here is a movie I just want to let you guys know was available from uh, MVD and Film Rise. It's a movie here which is produced by Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith called Sprinter, which uh, David Allen Greer is one of the stars of this movie. Like I said, this is one I just want to let you guys know was available. But on here, though, this has a feature-wise a Sprinter premiere at the Grove, as well as a theatrical trailer and a photo gallery on this one here. But anyway, though, guys, that was all for the review portion of this video. Thanks so much for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!